Okay, so now we are starting the chapter three, and the first important verse I found was, uh, so the man is bounded by his action. Man is bounded by his action except when it is performed for the sake of sacrifice. Therefore, efficiently perform your duty free from attachment for the sake of sacrifice alone. Right. Very interesting verse. Man is bound by his action except when it is performed for the sake of sacrifice. Yeah. So if you remember in the last chapter, Krishna was talking about one way to act uh, properly in this world is uh, uh, be established in the evenness of mind and then act. Right. So that evenness of mind itself is what he was calling yoga. Right. When people, when somebody is acting from that state of equanimity. Uh, his actions are very high as compared to when he's acting from the state of you know self-interest or anything else so that was one um, way he taught arjuna how to act here he is giving another way of uh, acting right so the man is bound by his action man is bound by his, his action uh, what does that mean so what krishna is saying uh, is let's say let's say Let's take an example. Let's say I am attached to alcohol, right? I am not, I don't drink, but uh, for the sake of example, let's say I'm attached to uh, alcohol, right? Now, see that how, how this action actually bounds me, right? Let's say I'm feeling very stressed today or some re for, for one reason or another reason, there's an urge for me to drink, right? And a part of me knows that this is not the right, I want to, you know, I have uh, gone through enough cycles to know this is not good for me neither for my physical body nor for my relationship nor for anything actually I know this but the, then I felt this urge and the urge is so strong and my will was so low that day uh, so I ended up drinking right I performed an action right and it was not for sacrifice I performed this action for kind of self-satisfaction kind of thing now how does it binds me right so first thing is uh, when this urge came and I drink, uh, I drink alcohol, what I did is basically I reinforced my behavior, right? In uh, this literature, they call it, I created samskaras, right? So I created an impression. So next time, so this does not end there, right? So that urge doesn't get fulfilled there, right? It's going to, it's in fact get reinforced. So it is going to come back again after some time and it's going to come back a little bit more stronger because I put a little bit more force into that, right? So I added a little bit more samskara. So now next time it is going to come, it is going to come even more stronger, right? Whenever I'm sitting alone, when I'm getting bored, when I'm stressed, uh, I'm, I'm, I can be pretty sure like there's going to be an urge to, you know, drink. So that is one way of seeing like how it is bounding me. The more I perform, and I just don't have one, um, you know, attachment. I have like so many of different attachment, a thousand and thousands of these, uh, these processes that are running and that's why my mind is so restless, right? Because I have so many different things that I'm attached to and then all these urges are coming, coming, coming and none of them are ever going to be satisfied but keep getting reinforced, reinforced, reinforced. In a way, this, this cycle is keep growing in the exponential way, right? So that's how I keep getting bound, right? I'm just sitting but I cannot just sit now anymore. I have like all these urges coming to me. Now I have to put my force to be centered or either... I have to, you know, uh, entertain them. And if I entertain them, I'm in a bad, I'm in an even worse situation, right? So see how it binds me, my action, my self, uh, sense-oriented action, self-oriented action, it binds me there, right? And it didn't get satisfied. And you can put anything other than alcohol. It could be the need of talking to somebody or it could be a need of comfort or it could be, you know, it could be thousand needs even listening to music it could be thousand things that we can get attached to and that actually start to bind us bind us in the in the world right another way of uh, another uh, reaction that happens another fruit that comes this is one fruit that is coming another fruit that uh, came uh, because i knew this is uh, not good for me i it, so as soon as i drink or finish drinking uh, i can be assured what is going to happen to my psyche Right? My psyche is going to react. Right? There's a judgment system inside my head. So my 
psyche is going to react why did i do it and the conversation would be something like you know i am such i have no self uh, control over myself and uh, i am worthless or something like that or it could be something like what's wrong in you know drinking if i cannot enjoy my life what's the point of this and that and all these kind of stuff right so it created a reaction in my psyche whenever i did this uh, action um, it one it reinforced the behavior second it created this kind of a reaction right in my psyche and that reaction is again another action and the whole cycle continues right so it disturbs my mind and then it created it reinforced cycle right so you see how it's going to become even more and more uh, um, tighter uh, for me to live like this uh, going forward so perform the action for the sake of sacrifice yeah man is bound by his action except when it is performed for the sake of the sacrifice now what happens if somebody is performing the action for the sake of sacrifice right a uh, sacrifice the word is used here is yagya and he gave like many example of yagya uh, some of them are like uh, uh, some people perform yagya by you know self control some people perform yagya by self study some people perform yagya by charity some by you know austerity some by strong uh, fasting some by pranayama all these kind of different uh, actions because they know their meanings um, their fruits are very nectar oriented so he's saying these 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 things are more like sacrifice oriented things right uh, whatever he's mentioning here and when you act for the sacrifice you do not create the bondage let's take the example of uh, somebody's performing uh, uh, fasting right a strong fasting to cleanse his body or you know uh, he's performing some kind of purification all of these uh, uh, sacrifices are going to have the purification uh, element into it right so what happens let's say if i perform fasting and i'm performing with the intention of sacrifice right i'm not performing with the intention of you know proving myself myself like i want to make a record <laughs> i want to make a record how long i can fast not that kind of mentality that is again going to bound me because it is more you know self oriented kind of action here the action is more for the sacrifice for the purification of my body and this kind of intention is there so what is going to happen now right first of all this does not have because let's see let's see the both things that we saw in the reaction of having alcohol right what is going to happen here is uh, it does not have the same kind of emotion uh, when i had what i had with the you know when i was uh, drinking alcohol right there was like a strong urge there was a urge it's a very uh, clear emotion right uh, that and i reacted on the urge so that urge get you know reinforced here i don't have any urge here right in fact it's more like a uh, uh, little bit more you know uh, i don't want to use word suffering but it's more it's a little bit more hard to do this action right it's not like i'm doing it out of urge right it's a little bit even more challenging for me to do so that action does not get reinforced right in that sense if it gets reinforced even better but it doesn't get reinforced because it doesn't have that element of urge into it right it's more pure action right so i didn't my action didn't bound myself right my action didn't bound me in the in the world right i performed an action it did purify my body and all these things but at the same time my action didn't create more bondage in the world right the other action were creating the bondage now what happened to my psyche my did my psyche reacted on this uh, most likely my psyche will not react or if it reacts uh, it is going to react more in the positive sense in the sense of like uh, the 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 uh, the conversation will be opposite as compared to when i was uh, <laughs> Uh, drinking alcohol the conversation was more about like i am i don't have self control and you know what's wrong in in that and that here it would be like oh i have self <laughs> i am pretty strong or uh, it would be more you know uh, it would be much better feeling right and i will uh, most likely going to experience the fruit that comes here in terms of my psyche is not disturbing but more you know pleasant and peaceful right so both ways you will notice you are not getting bound the same way you were getting bound when you were performing an action to satisfy an urge right so that's what i understood by this the man is bound by his action except when it is performed for the sake of sacrifice 
therefore efficiently perform your duty free from attachment uh, for the sake of the sacrifice yeah so that's the very interesting way krishna is telling arjuna like uh, how, what should be your intention how you should be you know uh, acting in this world and then in fact he goes forward he tells a few other things like having created this uh, mankind along with uh, sacrifice so he's saying basically the man the the realm of mankind itself is being created with the you know seed of sacrifice so you it's built into the human psyche it's built into the human nature this whole sacrifice uh, sacrifice oriented uh, you know uh, action And then he also say people who eat after sacrifice, uh, they do not incur any sin. Again, sin by disturbance of the mind. So if you sacrifice something and then if you even if you did something like uh, a little bit self-oriented, you're not going to feel disturbance in the mind. In this way, in the same way, when you just did something to satisfy your senses or satisfy your urges, in that case, you are going to feel <laughs> uh, uh, you basically did a sin, according to. Krishna here. Now, here is the next verse, and uh, almost in all all of his teaching, he is teaching on the two levels, right? One, he is teaching on the level of Arjuna, uh, where he is te telling where Arjuna represents somebody who is in this state, like like we are, more in the state of ignorance, according to Krishna, and. Uh, He's telling Arjuna to do this, not don't do this, and all can. He's giving this these kind of teaching to Arjuna, and then he also tells the person who delights in self and gratified with the self and controlled in the self has no duty, right? And he is ind independent from all this, right? So he's saying that if if somebody who is uh, you know in is established in the higher state in the sense of he's established in himself he found a joy in himself his uh, deeper states then he just doesn't have a motive behind his action right whatever he is doing even if he is doing you know uh, taking any sense pleasure or whatever he is doing he does not incur any sin or anything because he doesn't even have any kind of intention of doing anything you know yeah, intention of you know finding any a joy or anything from anywhere else right he's already in the state which is he knows like much higher as compared to uh, anything that he can receive from you know uh, satisfying the senses or uh, doing any other stuff right so for that kind of person he's telling there is no action there is no uh, duty or uh, he is just beyond all these things right so that uh, so he's kind of nudging arjuna slowly like Okay. Also consider this getting established in that state. <laughs> uh, first, get yourself like uh, you know, um, get yourself centered or get yourself you know uh, above the water in your level, and then think about moving in that direction because uh, um, that is more like a supreme state. And then, yeah, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, chapter three, uh, part one.